Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back. We're bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. We're up at 3.30 a.m. and we are at it. We are back in the saddle. She looks cute, too. He's adorable, too. Well, I am grateful for coffee. I love coffee. Coffee is an addiction. I will never give up as as long as there's never. coffee ava- available. I, yeah. I, I like coffee. And at 3.30 a.m., yes, absolutely. But this is actually like part of, I think, a change as we get more in tune with the natural cycle. It does have its benefits um, with rhythms and natural rhythms of the body. But we're not going to talk about that necessarily, although everything about this world's system is very unnatural. We do want to thank our patrons. We couldn't do it without you guys exclusive video coming up uh, today on patreon as well usually twice a week so as you see here another massive protest in israel calling on netanyahu to resign immediately before all the craziness happened before the uh attack and we should probably leave it at that uh the attack again that triggered the war in in gaza which ultimately is truly a war against humanity and is an atrocity and i think most people's eyes honestly or at least it certainly seems like the majority of people uh do not like what's happening and what's happened in gaza and i think the reality is um that it is a harbinger of of things to come with the plans of the system and you know this is why we we kind of harp on this when you see the massive amount of people out there and you know uh, it, it it was not um completely peaceful as you could see here the israeli police began intervening against the demonstrators with tear gas and sound sound bombs yeah it's just i'll give you a taste <laughs> You know, sometimes you just need to have that extra dynamic where you could actually hear the chaos. Oh, tons of chaos. In fact, as we were saying, you know, Netanyahu, it looked like he might be forcibly removed from power before all these things happened. Before uh, the hostage situation, the, the attack that happened against the uh, Israeli people. And I'll use that wording uh, because, again, there, as we understand, uh, there's this technique, um, there's this thing that is utilized that we call fake banners, whereas what they're trying to do is to get public opinion behind something. So there has to be a triggering event. The Project for a New American Century back in 1997 wrote down that there's no way we could invade uh, seven countries in five years uh, without the American people being behind it. We would need some sort of new Pearl Harbor, some sort of triggering event. This is 1997 to get the people riled up to where they would actually go along with uh, invading uh, Iraq, for instance, Afghanistan, uh, Sudan and Syria. And, you know, again, you guys know the history or at least I know our our regular followers understand the history you know they needed a triggering event and then we had 911 and you know the whole thing to many people just felt unusual and abnormal and here Netanyahu had maybe one out of every uh, five or six Israelis literally were in the streets before all this started and if he was removed, would we have had this reality or would we have been on a different timeline is the question. I just see a huge, huge mess. And I mean, it's all because of some sort of belief in ownership of the land. And there truly is, if we if we look at natural law, there is no ownership of the land. There is utilizing the land for a little while but none of us really own anything and the the bigger these so-called leaders are the more ownership that they feel i mean to me it just goes back to 
it, it all is has to do with a, an alien entity, not a being that is one of us, it has nothing to do with it. This is all about a type of possession. This is all about spells. This is all about chaos. This is all about confusion. This is all about ego ownership. It's just, it's, I don't see anything good in it or productive. And I, I hope it doesn't feel like we're just focusing in on this one uh, zone of uh, area topics of discussion. It, I do think it's it's because I think we're at a critical juncture. You know, I think we are, again, creeping up to that point. Very similar to as if it was like, say, December you know, 1st or something, 2019. And the world was about to shift and change. Uh, and it did to a very high degree, I think we're at that juncture again. Uh, we are probably days or weeks away from uh, a shift. Certainly, the, ne- the last part of this, this year is going to change everything. Uh, and it's, it's, again, something that many people can see. We can obviously feel and sense. And yet, there is this awakening, and this is part of the push. The awakening is happening, I think, faster than the control system has bargained for. And I do think we can absolutely shift paradigms. Things are not written in stone as much as they want you to. That's a black magic technique that they use. Ah, so let it be written. So let it be done. Yeah, you know, take that writing and stick it where the sun doesn't shine is, is the answer to that. We don't want this darkness on this planet. Uh, we want a new day to the dawn. Absolutely. And, and we want to change. The only change uh, that's going to be substantial is a change in the way that the planet is run. When you see this, I mean, as they're hosing down people that are protesting for peace, they want peace. You know, again, the governments should be all about making sure there is peace in a peaceful way themselves. And no, the governments are not about peace. The governments want war. All of the governments want war because they're all really one government. That's that's the bottom line here. There's one paradigm that is is being exposed. Again, conquer through division and conflict. As soon as there's peace, people would be recognizing what the problem is they they need to have us worked up and and foaming at the mouth so to speak they need to have people acting like rabid dogs and then they set the people on each other and that way they maintain their power working from the shadows and and we do all the dirty work by going along with it let peace break out everywhere let there be a a peaceful a revelation in the minds of humanity that this is all completely orchestrated, completely orchestrated, planned far in advance. You know, they're talking about endless sea of protesters, hundreds of thousands, and all sorts of chaos. They're, they want peace. And the governments of this world don't want peace. If we had peace, they would fall because they would be exposed for what they are. And Israel has mandatory service. You have to go in. So you have to go in. You have to be uh, intermingled with all sorts of nanu, nanu, you know, that mork from ork thing again that can affect your consciousness, absolutely. And then you have the programming. And, you know, what happened was uh, they found uh, six bodies of what was t- taken to be hostages th- you know, by Hamas, they tell us. Again, well, we understand. I mean, who is, who is, you know, who really is Al-Qaeda? Al-Qaeda became something that was a commonly used um, phrase, which again shows that we know uh, they create and I wouldn't really necessarily say boogeyman, but in some ways it's like a boogeyman, mm-hmm. you know, but at the same time it is real. Again, you know, it's not like hostages don't die. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's not like wars don't kill people. 
Yeah, there was a lot of quotes about um, also Poland and, you know, recognize too that Nazi Germany in, invaded Poland and yet so did the Soviet Union. They had worked together initially and then at, at some point in time the plan was uh, for Germany to attack Russia, well, Soviet Union at that time. And so they would no longer be allied uh, together, but they started out allied and attacked Poland. And I was looking at stats in that conflict, and it really looked like, what, what was the outcome? It was a tremendous brain drain. There was a lot of brilliant people that were uh, taken from the world, people that were maybe thinking along a different line. We've, we've seen, again, how the Rockefeller medicine is the dominant medicine on the planet now, and it really is from the Rockefellers. It is, again, from uh, big oil, as so much of the products that it produces are derivatives and have something to do with oil. I mean, this is just a fact, and yet we can see that on, on a whole, the health of the planet is failing miserably and going down the tubes. It hasn't been successful. Why is it still in place? Because its purpose is not to be successful, it's to be profitable. And we can understand that. Uh, Bill Cooper, and speaking of 9-11, he called it a month before it happened. He said they're about to trigger something. He even said that they're going to blame Osama bin Laden. CIA asset. You, there's photos of Osama with the first Bush. And coincidentally, I was in a martial arts class um, that was led. <laughs> the teacher was actually uh, somebody that had dual citizenship from Israel. So he was really um, focused on the Middle East all the time. And I remember when the first uh, war broke out, they stopped the class and announced it. And everybody was concerned. And that was really the beginning of a, a whole new stage in all this, even before 911. So Bill Cooper, you know, after he called all that, like one month later, after 911 in October, I believe it was October, just one month later, the tax guys came knocking and, and Bill Cooper's no longer with us. He, he, he spoke out too much. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that are speak, speaking out too much for the system's liking. But here he said, you know, Israel was created as an instrument to bring, bring about the Battle of Armageddon and the fulfillment of prophecy. Who gave us the prophecies? The same system that's fulfilling them. And this is the bottom line, because what, what, what is the outcome? Uh, you know, here he says, well, the outcome is, you know, a nuclear war, um, he says, and such destruction that all humanity will say, we can never have this again. We can never have individual nations. There has to be just a oneness. But they want to control it through that oneness. And in reality, the government that they envision is one that is um, exactly what you see going on in Gaza would be in a world level. Anybody that doesn't go along, you know, lockstep, with the system will find themselves living in a Gaza. Gaza's been raised. There's, again, let not one stone be on top of another stone. When you read the Old Testament, it is perhaps some of the most terrifying, nauseating stuff you're going to read. And it's the control system. And, and again, I knew this when I was a kid. It hit me. Um, literally, and there's there's never been a time when I haven't stopped studying this in my, well, this is going to be my 60th year of life now. And so, listen to this. This is from Pelham. I'm in Hebron, and I've just been told about a wall. So this gate locks about 40 Palestinian families, and it actually locks uh, at certain times where they can't come out. This actually... So, you know, again, this is over in Israel. You know, they, they lock in about 40 Palestinian families. They can't even leave. They're locked in. Side of the road that I'm walking on, Palestinians can't come. There's actually a bus stop over behind me, and the Palestinians aren't allowed to take it. I can take it. The Palestinians can't take it. That's complete racism at the heart. 
And if I walk over here at the bus stop, you'll see. How you doing? You can see the heavily guarded stuff from the Palestinians. So I wonder who's protecting who. They all seem so worried about the Palestinians. There's nothing to worry about. It's terrible. Do you like the racism? Yeah. What do you think about the Palestinians not being able to walk along there? It's because you don't think about other people? Or? Of course I do. And then how can you not think when they can't walk here and they can't get the bus? Uh -huh. They can't get the bus, they can't do anything. What do you think? Okay. You don't have to read up. They're living here, man. They're not allowed over here all the on the bus. American dollars paying, huh? Fantastic. Hey, can I ask you what you think of the racism here? What do you think? What do you think about the Palestinians not being able to walk here? Yeah, yeah, fuck, Anna. Don't care? What? You don't care? So, I don't see the care. I understand this. See, you see the arrogance about it. Very arrogant that they're racist right to the heart. It's disgusting. You should be really ashamed of yourself. Say hi, huh? You're looking for peace? Just want to steal all of Palestine? You know, it's it's if you call it out in reverse, as he's doing right here, they'll basically it, it's like you're just simply pointing out the oppression but by pointing out the oppression they'll say that you're oppressing the oppressor if if you follow what i'm trying to say it's 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 a mess and it's deliberately done that way and and those who uphold it are you know those are the ones that we are hoping will um awaken to a point where they're able to do some self-reflection. If you can do even just a little bit of self-reflection, it's like that opens a door to a world that is a, a, a much better world. And so many times it's not until these folks have children or until unless something really horrific happens in their life that they're able to look at the system and say, hey, there's something wrong. And, and uh that's just not enough it's not enough it's getting those who have a little bit of authority and getting those who are upholding the lines that the controllers are drawing it's getting them to take a look at themselves and i don't know exactly how to do that except for putting the energy out there the energy of love and the energy of understanding and the energy of uh just you know being good to each other for right now you know until something else comes along until maybe that energy picks up speed but what if we were all putting that intent out there energy is a thing it's a thing it's tangible you know we can we we can get it started but we all have to do it together absolutely so this is uh, a member of parliament again individual members of parliament speak out doesn't necessarily mean anything's going to really happen governmentally we need to have massive amounts of people uh, refusing to along go along with the system is what it is without the complicity of the u.s and europe netanyahu would not be able to commit the uh the g word there for the past 11 months so spain must break all ties with israel you know, again, Israel is uh, an entity that is all about this time and, and again, the, the end times. But the end times are the entirety of the Kali Yuga. That's, that's the reality. This never stops in, in a Kali Yuga. This is the way it is. And, you know, this is interesting, too, because you can see from Hebrew to, Alama to Aramaic uh, and Arabic, the roots are the, really the same, and even DNA tests will show um, the similarity. Again, you you even have um, in this in in the Bible the story of again the patriarch switching his hands and blessing the one, and and it was you know by traditional um, traditional routine you would always bless the eldest, but then it was switched up. There's, there's a lot there um, in, that's symbolic. <clears throat> but ultimately, if you look at it, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, when you look at Allah, it really does come from the same root as Eloah, Elohim. It, 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 and the, but yet the English word for God has nothing to do with it. And, and this is what people don't understand. People are brought up 
with these beliefs that have nothing to do with the original intention. And here you're you're automatically going and thinking this is talking about uh, God as in the creator of this universe. But no, it was never about that. Never about that. And and people that understand the Hebrew uh, roots and, and Aramaic or Arabic, they have a, a better picture of this. They do. They do have a better picture of it. They have a deeper understanding. They have a wider vocabulary, even though, I, I mean, I look at all of it and it's just, to me, it's just one big mess because there's no true relevancy to it other than the controllers use it. Yeah, absolutely. And this is another one uh, that's talking about <clears throat> like Yahweh. And Yahweh is just one of a group of beings that is a a group of beings that are, as he's using the word here, authoritative powers. One of a group of authoritative powers. This is not the creator of, of the universe. And in fact, you know, rabbis understand this. They totally understand this. But again, there's this line of thinking in, in, in the Christian tradition that what you're talking about is the creator of the universe. No, when you look to the words of David, King David, he said master of the universe. And that's a big difference. It's big. The master of the universe. This is, again, a word denoting uh, conquering and, and taking over. Uh, master. He used that word master. That is so key. Uh, it, it makes me think of Metallica. Master of puppets. M you know, master. Master. That word, not creator. No, and definitely not the source of all things. And it's all about obedience and disobedience to these beings. Uh, all the Abrahamic religions. Again, the three biggest religions are really giving power to the control system. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam are all part of the Abrahamic family tree, which is the majority of the world. The blue is where the Abrahamic traditions are dominant. The red is where they're not. And then they got communism as another alternative because if you really look at it, again, the Torah doesn't talk about the afterlife. Why doesn't it? Because, you know, some Jews didn't believe in an afterlife. And really, the, the Torah is all about the here and now. And, you know, the Talmud is explaining that. And, you know, when you look at it, you can see the majority of the world is, is absolutely controlled by the Abrahamic traditions. And more and more people are falling away all the time from organized religion, although Islam is, is still growing uh, relatively. But you can see between Christians and, and Islam, uh, it's, it's basically uh, like 55%. And, you know, Judaism, 0.2%. Tiny, but it spawned these. It spawned these, and then you see everything else you now unaffiliated or, or non-religious, basically. So you know, if you put in, uh, and say you know, communism, atheism, you know, then it's it's even more. So you can see folk religions, and this other religions, maybe six percent. Which one thing I, I, I start to under I start to under I just started to understand truly um, in my teens that there wasn't really at the core of it differences um, at the root of Hinduism and all the quote unquote indigenous or folk religions out there they were in in basic agreement but still it's it's such a minority. And at the same time, even in Hinduism, it, it has its fundamental strains that are, again, um, very, very um, more rigid, but still not to the not not to uh, the extreme that we see in in Christianity and, and Islam and the Abrahamic traditions. So you know, again, this is one system that is all about the here and the now. 
And it's about controlling the minds of people politically with, again, the structures that were given politically. Oh, you don't like capitalism? You must be communist again. It's, it's all the either or, but all those choices are really controller choices. This is the bottom line. You're, you know, okay, you're going to uproot, you're going to move to Russia because you don't like what's going on in the U.S. Putin's offering, you know, help to do that. But he's one of them too. They're all, they're all on, on board. It's just simply getting to the point where the, <laughs> the vast majority of humans recognize the play and refuse to take part refuse to go into compulsory service because you know the drafts are coming and at the same time they understand that when they do put the drafts in uh at this point in time there's too many people that are going to be awakened that are not going to go for it and so you know at that point things start to crumble and disintegrate it already is crumbling so we just need to accelerate that crumbling especially when they have other plays that are imminent. And, you know, again, when you look to the Old Testament, you want to know what's coming, look to the Old Testament. You know, God sends droughts, wildfires, plagues, pestilence. Uh, you know, it, it just goes on and on and on. The system mass produces ticks and and also mosquitoes. And, you know, you guys have shared two different locations I didn't even know where there's mosquito factories here in the U.S. Wow. Well, I did know about Plum Island. And, and the fact is, I mean, they make the illnesses so they can give you the cures. And this is all part of the system that we're in. And we don't need it. We'd be fine without it. We could get along with our uh, you know, differences just fine. Absolutely. It's just the only problem is the system. The system's got to go. Anytime you vote for the system, you're giving power to the system. So until people can can get it through their heads that a vote either where any and for any candidate in the system, even if you hand right in Mickey Mouse, you're still voting. You're you're still upholding it. You're still saying, "Hey, I think this is a good idea of which controller to pick." You know, I mean, when I when I look at this system, what I, I try to visualize and um, just always looking for a better understanding of the creation of this system. And, you know, if you have a, a, a mad scientist and a, and a rat and some various different mazes, and let's say the rat is just really wanting to be free, well, the mad scientist can put... Um, you know pathways all over it could put another maze to the left to the right and even at the end of the maze and the rat might think that it got out somewhere but then it just ends up in another maze unless that rat really thinks out of the box and climbs up and over the walls and does that really scary thing because it is scary the rat's never really going to be free it might think it's free because like it made it out of the maze but it goes a little ways it finds itself in another maze and all the time you see this mad scientist all he's doing is he's just clicking in the mazes you know keeping the rat busy keeping the rat thinking that it's um doing something good and freeing itself but it never really gets to free itself and that mad scientist he gets it he knows exactly what he's doing and he's looking, and, and we're the rats, you see. See, he's looking down at the rats, and he's just kind of laughing, knowing, okay, they're going to get out of this box, but they're going right in the next box. This Because the scientist knows. This is the controllers that I'm speaking of. These are not human entities. These are alien entities that understand what our moves are going to be. And that's why it's so important to think out of the box and not give in to the anger that they set us up for. Yes, absolutely. And they have thought all this through to a very high degree. So, I mean, I've, I noticed a few comments, too, because I see it as one of their um, another way they catch people is they'll say, well, OK. And it's it's very big in the flat earth uh, crowd. They'll say, well, the millennial kingdom already happened. The thousand years of peace has already happened. And now we're in the last little piece where Satan's let loose for a little while and then he's going to be bound again. That's just another way to keep you in the same, um, in the same mind trap. 
So you still haven't woke up. If, if that's what you think, you're still falling in line with the system because you're still agreeing to a kingship. You're still agreeing to a ruler. If you had any concept of what the real creator is like and what the real source of all is like, it's not authoritarian. It's, it's about expression. It's totally the opposite. Individuality is really, in so many ways, an agreed upon illusion because we are one. And all of all of of the wisdom traditions and the esoteric traditions will speak this. This is the opportunity to express your uniqueness. It's not to fall in line and submit, uh, which literally Islam submit to the will of the controllers. That's what it, it means. And let's not forget every time we're filling out a form online or even on our phone, how often, how often when you're done filling out that form, do you see the word submit? Submit, human. <laughs> you must submit. It's terrible. It is. No, the creator is love and the creator is all about being you. You know, you be you. Just look at these two guys. They're each going to be themselves, and yet they get along wonderful. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.